a nation bidding farewell to John McCain, Arizona senator, war hero, patriot, maverick, so much more. There's been few leaders that have ever sacrificed as much as John McCain. He was fierce, he was loyal, he could work across the other side of the aisle, but he could be the very best person in a battle. He was always willing to speak truth to power at a time when there are so few people who do that. I think, you know, when he's remembered uh, this coming week and the week after and the months after, it's going to be as a patriot. Uh, with all his strengths and weaknesses, all his accomplishments, it was really just the fact that America came first with him. Joining us now is former McCain presidential campaign economic advisor Douglas Holtz Aiken. How do you remember? What is the one thing that you carry with you? And when you when someone says to you, "Tell me about Senator McCain," well, he had an enduring faith in the American people, and you know he loved the rough and tumble of politics, but his very favorite thing were, were town halls where he could interact with, hear from, get an earful from it uh, if necessary. He was perfectly fine with that. Um, and he, he, the zest he brought to that activity, uh, I'll just never forget. And I think it allowed him uh, to carry himself through his career. I mean, he, he, he believed in democracy. He tried to spread it around the world. He was constantly traveling, uh, promoting people's freedom and human rights. But uh, it allowed him, when he lost, to have great faith in the results. The people had spoken, and that was that. And so, you know, I remember after 2008, you know, I ran into him about a year later, and uh, he just said, well, you know, just wasn't our time. And, you know, he appeared to be perfectly comfortable in his skin and over it. I was not. <laughs> so uh, I'll always remember that. And I'm sure he made a joke about that, too, <laughs> to you, oh, to yeah. you Doug. His, his sense of humor is legendary. So when, when that little smile started creeping up, you had to get ready. Something was coming. <laughs> I, I love the joke that he used to tell about uh, how he slept like a baby after he found out that he lost. He said, you know, <laughs> sleep for two hours and wake up crying. <laughs> Eat, go back to sleep for two hours, wake up crying. He was just such an extraordinary, self-deprecating humor. Um, but I think he also saw that he had such a, a bigger purpose. You know, if, I've been thinking about the fact that right. he ran for president twice and, and, and lost. And I don't think he really lost. I think he was right where he was supposed to be because he had a calling. And his calling was really to reach across the aisle, to bring people together, to stand up for his values. And I hope that we can take this moment and this week celebrating his life. And I'm glad that we have a full week to do that. Um, and really think about what that means for us as Americans right now in this very, very critical time. Do you think that this week, as we reflect, that there's going to be a, a change as people think about what this man was able to do by standing up for what he believed, but also talking to people he disagreed with? I, I hope so. I, I think uh, one of the great lessons of watching him in action was he, he was a deeply conservative individual. He was a staunch Republican. But he believed that the United States was a cause greater than that, greater than himself, and that if the United States would benefit and the people would be benefit, it was worth reaching across the aisle and working with Bernie Sanders on the VA or working with uh, um, uh, Ted Kennedy on immigration or working with Russ Feingold on campaign finance reform. Those were issues that were hard issues, and he felt that they had to be grappled with. He wasn't interested in doing small ball. He wanted to make a difference and address the big issues. And, and it guided him, and it was really um, uh, a wonderful thing to watch in action. And, and Doug, before we go, one thing, you're going to think maybe this is silly, but like in terms of his policy ideas, even when he was running in 2008, I remember vividly his idea for reforming health care. And it was... Oh. Right. It was wildly free market. It was basically like put all the power in the hands of the American people, let them make decisions, take away the tax benefit of corporations, get, cut the middleman out of it. And I just think that I hope that people remember him for his policy ideas as well, not just about bipartisanship and his heroism, but also like the nuts and bolts of real free market stuff. I, I agree. I, I was proud of those policies, um, disappointed that we went another direction. I mean, that's life. And, and again, when he thought about policy issues, he was always thinking about the average American. Mm -hmm. How do we take care of them? How do we give them the power? How do we make markets serve them? Uh, it was a coherent vision for a, a much, much freer and more prosperous America. Uh, Doug, are you going to be going to the, the funeral services this week and the memorial services? Uh, I will, yes.
And I, I said this earlier before we move on, that it, it's very meaningful and powerful that the entire McCain family shared his cancer fight with all of us as it was unfolding. Again, the very often when people are diagnosed, they feel like there's a stigma attached to it, not this family. And it really lifts up everybody who is facing that battle, every individual, but really every family as well. And I send my, send my blessings and prayers to them and thank them for that. Well, Dagan, I think he was an extraordinary man. That's an extraordinary family. Uh, his mother, Roberta, is still alive. <laughs> She's dead. That was the one. That was the unbelievable one. Unbelievable woman. That was the one thing that I was talking to my mother on the phone about Senator McCain last night, and my mother was telling me stories about the senator's <laughs> mother that she was remembering you, you all of these. You don't even want to. <laughs> The, uh, how about when she tried to rent a car in France? They told her she was too old, so she bought, bought it. it. Right. That, yeah. was, that was it. That was the story that my mother told last year. 